Roy, I've been trying to deal with two big concepts, uh, the development of the human mind, the development of human society. Obviously, they, they interrelate. You've done a great deal of theoretical thinking about the development of human culture. Now, does that help us understand society or is that, or is, and, and mind, or, or is, is that an independent element that derives out of that? Culture and mind, I think, are highly interrelated uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, some years ago, I wanted to put together what we know about human nature, you know, what kind of creature is the human being. And I wanted to go without preconceptions, uh, just read all the experimental findings I could and pull them together. It took me a long time to, to kind of organize and come up with a big picture then. The book that I, I wrote, I struggled with what, what should I call this? Is this about what, make, what makes us human or what we are? And what I settled on was cultural animals. As we are animals, we evolved and we have much in common. We feel pain, we get hungry, we have to sleep at night. Uh, we have a lot in common with the other uh, animals. And yet we have culture, which other animals maybe have the tiniest bit of. Unlike us, we, we've made it central to culture is how we survive and reproduce. The traits that make us human, that set us apart, including the great capacities of the human mind, uh, are adaptations to enable us to do this new kind of social life. So, the specific features of the human mind, it is an animal brain with some additional features that were probably selected by nature and evolution, but to enable us to uh, create this kind of society that we have, where we have moral responsibility, where we have laws. I mean, we, we follow laws made by people that we never meet, never see, don't agree with. Mm. Uh, we send them half of our income mm -hmm. to spend on things we probably don't approve of. Uh, and yet that's important. Society gives us a lot. Uh, when we have trouble, we get sick, we go to the hospital, we want to learn, we go to the schools. Uh, we need defense against our enemies, we turn to the, uh, the military. We, uh, so you're using culture in the very broadest possible way. I mean, how, how would you define culture then? Well, culture is one of those words people use a lot and don't define very often. Right. But culture is the set of systems uh, that organize human society. Uh, it's uh, based on sharing information, uh, common understandings, um, systems for ways of doing things, uh, economic trade is often an important aspect of it. Um, so all these require a mind, a mentality that is several steps beyond what even the most sophisticated uh, chimpanzees and, and other apes can do. I mean, let's face it, if the apes could make their lives better, by getting together a corporation and producing some good that would sell in our economy, they would have figured that out by now. Uh, we're certainly not going to buy a toothbrush or anything just because even if it's half the price of the others, uh, just because it was made by monkeys. But they can't get it together. They can't organize themselves in that way with interlocking roles and shared understandings and collective planning and all that. That's what enabled our species to take off. And so that's what the human mind uh, acquired the capacity to do, because again, that's how we survive and reproduce uh, by forming these groups and sharing information and, and developing these systems. So what are some key characteristics of the human animal that enables culture to develop, as, as you did in your theoretical analysis? Okay, uh, I'm thinking the first uh, 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 step was uh, improved communication. There's okay. arguments as to how much animals you know, they do communicate a little bit, but they don't really understand that uh, others don't know things. They have uh, you know, fairly fixed patterns. Um, and they started understanding, started getting the idea that you could figure out when a monkey reaches for the banana and doesn't get it. The other monkey could see it and, and, and complete the action. And, mm -hmm. says, and so, in a sense, it knew what was happening in the other monkey's mind. It wanted that banana. Um, they never got the idea that if you're figuring out my mental state from my uh, hand movements, then I can use my hand movements to signal to you what my mental states are. Mm -hmm. There's a pretty strong case that speech started with, uh, with gesture. Once there's speech in the language, and that produced huge advantages, then evolution moved the voice box down. None of the other animals can, can control their speech well enough to learn to talk. Researchers were trying to teach chimps to talk for years. They, all, they almost gave up on it entirely till they hit on the sign language thing, because they, can, they mm -hmm. can make signals and signs and mm -hmm. gestures, but none of them can talk. Uh, that's because at evolution, there's some costs to doing it, but it was worth it because of communication. So that was a step. Uh, new kinds of controlling your behavior. Um, so that uh, you can think abstract thoughts and change your behavior based on that. The 
self-control, to regulate your behavior, to go, to subsume it to external rules, that's crucial for society, much more advanced than human beings. I mean, suppose a bunch of gorillas got together and opened a restaurant, which they couldn't do because they couldn't get together. Suppose you took gorillas into a human restaurant. They wouldn't work. They wouldn't. They would take food off other people's plates and they wouldn't pay and they would you know, go to the bathroom on the floor and all sorts of things. They, they can't control their behavior enough. And so, if we let gorillas in, restaurants would cease to exist. It just would not be workable uh, to have a restaurant where people don't obey the rules. And it's, it's the same for stores, it's the same for uh, companies and jet airplanes and everything else. People have to respect rules for the system to work. And when people respect the rules, the system works and everybody is better off. And you need to have self-control in order you to need make, self -control make, to make do yourself that. Uh, uh, susceptible to that. Economic trade is one of my favorite examples because it, it's, it's clear, it's pretty much non-existent outside the human race, it's ubiquitous in the human race, and it's a big engine of growth. Countries that trade more become rich, countries that don't trade uh, become poorer or stay poor. But for trade, you have to understand another's mental state, that this person wants something I have and, and I want something that person has. We have to understand how to make an exchange. Uh, we have to uh, be able to control ourselves so we don't cheat each other. If people, because, you know, if we're making a deal, I could cheat you, give you damaged goods or counterfeit money. If people cheat all the time, then there's no trade and the mm. system breaks down. But if we trade and we're fair, we treat each other fairly, we're both better off. And so the system and work. So most people follow the rules most of the time. And then the system works its magic to make, you know, to raise the quality of life. And instead of living outdoors and sleeping in the rain, we're uh, living in beautiful buildings and uh, dining in restaurants and, and, and so forth. Um, that all works, but we have to control our behavior to follow the rules. Is it necessary that we have a mind that can deal with abstract concepts that uh, enables that system to work? The question of whether the mental ability to deal in abstract concepts is absolutely required for culture. I, I hesitate to, to say whether it's required or not. It certainly makes it easier. Uh, cultures seem to abstract pretty early. As far as we know, for example, every culture has the reciprocity norm. So I do something for you, then you should do something for me. And people know this and feel it and respond to it. So that's somewhat abstract. It's mm -hmm. more than me just giving you a, a mm -hmm. banana. Um, there is that sense there, and, and so that's the level of abstraction that seems to come with culture. Uh, whether you could have any sort of culture without it, I, I hesitate to say no. Uh, animals can learn things and copy each other, and then the children can learn it and it passes on. And some say, well, there's the beginnings of culture there without much uh, abstract thought required. Uh, but if you're going to write the great works of literature or uh, enact the laws that are going to uh, write a new constitution for your country, abstract thought is really uh, essential there. How we go from small groups to political entities, you know, that's a very exciting change and probably abstraction and some kind of free will and a lot of other things are required to make that leap.